everybody. Um, in this set of podcasts, I'm going to talk about the Republic of Texas, which, of course, is one of the things that makes Texas distinct, that it was an independent nation um, for about 10 years. I don't think any other state in the United States can make that claim. Um, so it's one of the things that Texans are very proud of, but I, I would add a couple of caveats to that. First of all, is I'm going to talk about Texans, white Texans really never wanted to be an independent nation. They, they hoped to join the United States right after the Texas Revolution, but the U.S. said no, and I'll talk about that uh, in the podcast. And the other thing I would say is that the Republic of Texas is a much stronger entity in memory than it was in reality. And I have a map up, and I also posted the URL for this map. The boundaries of the Republic of Texas are pretty much what the boundaries of Texas had always been in, during the Spanish and the Mexican period. The, the border was the Nueces. Uh, it didn't cover West Texas. Laredo, for instance, uh, was not in the Republic of Texas. It still remained Mexican. And Laredo would be Mexican until 1845. Uh, the Republic of Texas was broke. Uh, it suffered from uh, Indian attacks. Uh, there were fears that Mexico would try to reconquer Texas during this period. So the Republic of Texas was basically kind of a mess. Nonetheless, it was an independent republic. And we're, we can, as Texans, can make the claim that we're the only state that was an independent republic. Now, Two things happened in 1836, I mean, when Texas becomes independent in 1836, and they're kind of mutually uh, contra contradictory, but that often happens in history. The first thing that's happen happening is, is that cotton production is booming um, in, the, in the Gulf region, including Texas during the period of uh, the Republican period. Um, there's just this insatiable demand for cotton on the global markets, especially in England. Uh, as I've said before, cotton um, is the, think of it as the oil of uh, the 19th century. It's the commodity that everyone wants, everyone needs, and they're willing to pay top dollar for it. So on one hand, you have uh, uh, the, the, the cotton economy of the, the Gulf area, an area that basically stretches all the way from Florida to Texas is booming. And Texas be becomes part of that. It had become part of that in the 1820s. But after it becomes independent, it becomes even more integrated into the global cotton economy. So that's number one. Uh, and I can't say it enough. Whenever you hear cotton, you have to hear, you have to think about slavery because they were completely intertwined. Uh, slaves were the ones that, that grew the cotton. Uh, slavery, as I'll talk about, and as we'll talk about as we move into this part of the course, was a system that was based on uh, complete violence and exploitation of the workers. So when I say cotton, always remember slavery is twin to that. Okay, so that's number one. The, the growth in the cotton economy in Texas becoming more and more integrated into the global cotton economy. Texas cotton is going to England, for instance, uh, as well as the U.S. Northeast. Okay, so that's number one. Number two, at the same time, you have this explosive growth in the demand for cotton, making it a very, very valuable crop. You have, interestingly, a global opposition to slavery growing at the same exact time. So at, this, at the same exact time, cotton and slavery are expanding um, and cotton is becoming worth more money. You also have a growing movement against slavery uh, in the Northeast, abolition of slavery. But the strongest area of abolition during this period is in Great Britain. So Great Britain plays a very interesting role in our story. And again, think about how global the history of Texas is. Texas is still global. 
But Great Britain played a very, very significant role during the Republic of Texas era, and in two ways. Number one, uh, Great Britain is receiving Texas cotton. Number two, though, Great Britain is starting to lean on the Republic of Texas to either mitigate their slavery, uh, to stop the African slave trade. Um, so England plays a very complex role in the Republic of Texas era. And I'll, I'll develop this in the podcast. So if you're confused, just listen to the podcast and I'll spell this out very, very clearly. What I just want to um, introduce to you is this idea at the same time you have this growth in the production of cotton and the demand of cotton and the use of slaves to grow cotton. At the exact same time, you have a counter countervailing movement as well globally centered in Great Britain, although there's some abolitionists in the US, which is anti-slavery. Now, when I say anti-slavery, people in Great Britain still needed cotton, okay? But what they wanted is they wanted cotton to be grown by workers that were paid wages, right? So it's not like England has decided it doesn't need cotton, but it wants cotton that is produced, is grown by working farmers that are getting, getting paid wages, okay? So England hasn't said goodbye to cotton. They just want the workers that produce the cotton to be getting a wage and not to be slaves. So what you have is the emergence of the Republic of Texas is an effort among Anglo-Americans who, who were the dominant class in Texas uh, to create a haven for American cotton farmers in a world that is increasingly hostile to slave labor. So Texas goes online as a republic at a very, very interesting time in world history where you have these countervailing notions. One, cotton production uh, in, in, you, grown by slave labor on one hand. On the other hand, this feeling that slavery is such an evil institution that it needs to be destroyed. Um, and this feeling is especially centered in Great Britain. And the significance of that is England was the most powerful nation on earth in the 1830s, much more powerful than the United States as a very, very powerful Navy. So two things are happening simultaneously. And I guess just to jump ahead, the abolitionists are ultimately going to win this battle slavery is abolished, at least in the United States um, in the 1860s. Uh, it's not abolished in Cuba, I think, until uh, the 1870s, and it exists in Brazil to the mid-1890s. Um, but in the U.S., slavery is on the way out. So Texas comes into the world as a slave republic at a moment when slavery is kind of beginning to be on the outs, that it is being attacked from all sides. And this is really going to shape the history of the Republic of Texas in ways that I think are often not very well understood.